Hi everybody, Alex Deployer from Expert Forex and in today's video, it's going to be a special one. We are going to try and create one million dollar settings for our new Bell Trader robot. And what's more, you're going to see this happen step by step. I'm going to go right from the beginning, right to the end and show you how this all happens. Now, this all happened almost a week ago when we launched the testing of the Million Dollar Bell Trader. So at the moment, what is happening is there's a whole lot of traders that are testing this robot. And before the test, I showed many examples of the robot trading well over a million dollars in one year. Then after this video, I did a another video unrelated which showed the robot optimization process to get the very best settings for a robot called the grid trend multiplier robot and this was also done on a practical basis i showed everything that i did right from the beginning right to the end so a number of the members in the forum then said why don't you do a similar video for the bell trading robot because that's the most important one at the moment because it will be launched this month and we want to be able to show people how to find the best settings so that's what today is all about i'm going to be showing you step by step how to get the very best settings for the bell trader which is currently being tested by our paid forum members but will be launched during october so during the optimization video that I made just a day or two ago, this is the format on your screen that we followed. We, it, it, it took a, an hour, it's an hour long video, and these are the steps that we went through. And I'm going to basically go through very similar steps with you, but we can cut out the section on tick data usage and why broker data is, is not good and then showing how to install tick data services on your MetaTrader platform. We can take that out. If you are interested in that, a link to that previous video will be in the description of the video as well as in the first commentary of the video and you can go and have a look at that specific part of that video. So we can skip all over that and we can go straight into the objectives and then into the test pat uh, test templates and then I'm going to show you how I create a, a test template then we're going to create a base case for this optimization run and that is where hopefully a million dollars will come out now i'm not sure because the previous run that i did i used a very aggressive currency and in this run i'm using the most conservative currency that you can get so i'm not 100 percent sure if we're going to make the million not too serious if we don't i'll show you how to upgrade to a million if you need to and then once we get those fantastic results we i'm going to show you how to make them safe to trade or safe to test and they will then be the base case that i that, that, that we'll use to test some other refinements that have been created for the bell trader and then right at the end once we have found some tradable settings we're going to test them against tick data because we're not going to be using tick data for the optimization it will take too long but we do, what the the hack is we do it at the end and make sure that the results that we have are valid in tick data format and then we're going to look at the robot trading on charts show you how it trades and also how you can have a look at the result so let's get straight into it okay so the objectives for today obviously as promised to find million dollar settings for the bell trader then it's also important to determine the strengths and the weaknesses of the bell trader where the dangers are to determine profit and drawdown ratios because they give an indication of risk and then we're going to go into ways of improving the routes making them safer and more robust and then we're going to be testing the refinement settings that have been built into the bell trader then the main objective is to find potential settings that we can actually use to trade the bell trader. 
Okay, so let's get right into it. Now, this shows why we've called our trader the bell trader. It's based on standard deviation channels and how the channels work. And I'll show you a little bit more about that is they have they work out the average of the price action that's happened and then they use statistics to say okay 68 percent of the price action will happen within one deviation of the average then 95 percent of the price action that includes that's that that and that will happen within two deviations of the price average and then 99% of the price action will happen within three devi deviations of the price average. Now, why is that important? Because now we know the size of the playing field. We know where the danger zones are and we know where the money printing zones are. And obviously, though, the, the middle, the one deviation area is where we want to trade and, and, and print money. So, and the shape of this is a bell, which is why it was named the bell trader. So, okay, here we have a chart with the standard deviation channels loaded onto it. And here are the channels. There are three main ones at the top, three main ones at the bottom. And then here's that middle line that I was talking. It's the average. They say it's the mean. I call it the spot of the price action and there it is and in theory most of the price action should happen within uh, one deviation away from the average and you can see that's happened there is some price action that will go two deviations away and uh, it's very unlikely that price action will happen three deviations away so that is the basis of this EA it calculates the deviations and make sure that we stay within a safe level of trading. Okay, here we are on my testing computer. Uh, it is it is a different one to the one we've just looked at. And here you can see the particular testing platform that I use. I'm also trading 25 versions of the Wave Liberator EA on this computer plus I'm trading 20 hedged EA platforms on this computer so it's a very powerful computer and in spite of that load I'm able to backtest quite successfully so so to see the strategy tester what you do is you click on view and click on strategy tester I've done that already and that is the view that you will see. Now I've loaded the Bell Trader into the strategy tester. I've loaded the Euro Pound. And why the Euro Pound? The Euro Pound is the safest currency to trade because we're looking for sideway currencies. We don't want ones that are violently volatile. So I'm, I'm, we're going to be running the Euro Pound today. Uh, I'm going to use open prices. Now I'm not going to, one of the uh, selections is every tick and as I might have mentioned earlier you, what you do is you use open prices r until right at the end where you convert the results into tick data much easier and because this EA doesn't have any indicators now th those channels aren't indicators they uh, th they are actual channels we aren't constrained by a time frame so uh, I can use a very special technique of using one minute time frame to trade the open prices and that will give us a result that is very close to tick data. So that's the one trick here is to use open prices with one minute tick data. And I'm using a one, min one pip spread. The pips are entered in points. But that is, in fact, one pip. All right, so that's the basic setup. I'm using tick data, which I, I mentioned earlier. It was the details of which you can see in the previous video. But uh, you can see I've got tick data ticked. And, and if you open up here, you can see I've got lots of tick. I've got many days. Now, why so many days? Because if you're going, you'll see this indicator uses a look button. Back period. So it says, how far do you want to look back 
to create your channels. And if we're going to be looking back, let's say for a year, at the start of the trading, you have to look back another year to have a channel that you're trading with. So you have to actually have enough tick data to look back two years to, to start trading. Not only from the point that you start, but it's, it, you have to look back another year. So there's a lot of test data that's been loaded into this particular system. Okay, that's the setup. So let's go and have a look at the template that I've set up. Now here are the settings for the Bell Trader. And uh, the, the, the settings are in this value column here. Um, when we test, we're going to use start, step, and stop process. And I'll explain that a little bit further. But let's just go down the, the, the settings. Basically, it's the first setting says, how uh, how far back do you want to go L look so um, i've got 200 in there and it says uh, what time frame do you want to look back now i use daily and the reason for daily is that it doesn't repaint that often this particular ea allows you to specify a time a, a time frame and so it doesn't have to sit on the daily daily time frame. You can put it on any chart you want because it's been specified in the EA. All right. So then it says, OK, what deviation do you want to start? Now, you, you, you've seen we've got one, two and three, but most of the action starts close to the, uh, the average line. So you don't have to start at one. You can start at point one, for instance, and that type of thing. So this is one of the key areas that, that that need to be optimized and uh, and you can see i've got a tick in there i've got a, a green tick in there to say i want this item optimized and i'm going to test it from 0.05 with jumps of 05 right up to 0.5 so I'm, I'm actually saying we could start at any at any point in that range, I don't know where we're going to start. Let the optimization process find the start. Then it says, do you want to increase the, the deviation sizes as you're trading? So in other words, you can keep them all the same, which would be a setting of one. Or if you want to increase them, you can multiply them by a factor. Um, and if you do it, like for instance, for 1.5, it's going to add 50% to the deviation size, another 50%, another 50%. So again, I don't know what is the correct answer. So I'm going from 1, which is no, no change, and I'm adding 0.1 to that up right up to 2.5, just to get a feel of what it will be. So optimization is the market telling you how it it traded well in the past and i'm i'm trying to find out how it traded well in the past then uh, uh the the other setting is do you want your deviation levels determined by the multiplier or do you want to do them manually so i'm ignoring manually there if you want to do it manually you can actually fill in values on a manual basis then we come to another major setting is how many lots do you want to use to start with? So in other words, uh, your first transaction, how many lots will it be? And I don't know what the optimal starting lots are. So I'm saying, so I'm telling it to start small, very small, 0.02, increase it by 0.02 and then go right up to five lots. I doubt whether five lots will manage, but I don't know. Let's see if the uh, uh, optimization gives us a clue. And then the same thing as for the deviations, we have a multiplier. So it says, do you want to multiply your lot sizing you can keep it the same that would be one or you could double it that would be two or anything in between and maybe a little bit over so what i've done is i said all right let's start at one let's increase it by 0.1 and let's go slightly over to to 2.5 we don't know what, what will be the optimal one and uh, these are the ones that will test at the end these um refinement settings over here so i won't go through them and then the last setting that is important that i want to know about is when there are more than one transactions open so let me explain 
the deviation lines also provide the targets. So if you open a, a trade, the next deviation line is your target. Now, it could be that the price doesn't move to your target. It actually goes the other way, like in many cases in trading, and therefore you start opening more than one transaction. So you have two transactions open. And when it's two transactions or more, it's a basket of transactions. And what the EA will do is it will close the basket at a special target. Don't know what that target is, and so I'm asking the the optimization process, please determine at what dollar target these baskets need to be closed. So I'm, I'm starting at $10, going up $10, and uh, right up to $240. Essentially, I've ticked one, two, three, four, five major settings for this EA. And what it's going to do is going to go test all of those possible settings all at once. <laughs> uh, it's a big job and uh, you'll see how that takes place. So there we are. We are ready to start the optimization process. Um, I've got my ranges in there. Uh, all I need to do now is click OK and then do a, a, a trial run. So uh, and the trial run is just to make sure that the um, optimization process is generating results because there, there are some little things. One of the settings needs to be naught instead of one and that kind of thing uh, that will prevent it from trading completely. You'll get zero results. So let's, let's uh, hit the start button. And off it goes. Now it's only testing the actual inputs that are in that column so just to show you it's now going and saying oh i'm, I'm going to treat these as actual actual, actual um, inputs or settings and let's go and see what results came up here so we go to report and whoa the results are quite good uh, uh, over a hundred thousand was generated by those random settings there a uh, hundred thousand was generated uh, and the drawdown was 36,000. So there's quite a big drawdown, nice nice profitability. So this is a good start. We've already got settings that are pretty good, not quite a million, but those are very acceptable settings. So what we're going to do is we're going to set this off to optimize to see if it can get to a million dollars. So let's do just that. So what I do is I click on optimization and we say, start and what it will do it will create the history behind uh, that that it needs to do the optimization we've already done that by that first test and then it will calculate how long it's going to take now this this is saying hey mate i'm going to take 14 hours to do this and now it's gone down to nine hours and it'll just probably end up to be about five hours so it's a, a five hour exercise that we're looking at here um and don't worry, the, win, the video is not going to run for five hours. What I'm going to do now, I'm going to let it run for five hours and we'll restart the video once those results are known. In, in the meantime, it, it's already done 14 of the 10,000 that it's going to be doing. Uh, there are in total f 15 million combinations that it will be testing but it, it, there's a simple uh, there's a very clever program that will reduce that 15 million to 10 by learning as it's going on it learns and learns and, and starts testing only the the possibilities that produce good results so let's have a look at the first bunch of results we've already got a hundred and forty five thousand results with a pretty high drawdown but we can we'll work on that one later on so there we are it's on its way and we'll talk again in about six hours or so and i'll be i'll, I'll go away and do other things and come back here and uh, we'll see what those results are 
Okay, back again. It's the next day because I let these long runs go overnight. And uh, I must just tell you that I've added a second test, which is testing the uh, euro yen. Because as I mentioned earlier, I was concerned that the euro pound would not reach the million dollar level and i was right to do so because the euro pound's got a lot of safety the more safety you have the lower the income side and uh, i then went for the euro yen which is a slightly more volatile currency and it has produced uh, good results so let's have a look at those results and again as you can see I've got two tester uh, programs running on this computer besides the 45 other accounts that, it, that they're running so uh, the computer is pretty strong and can handle these kind of optimizations. Okay so let's have a look at the euro part and we're going to look at the results and I'll just increase the size here. And you can see the uh, best results achieved by the euro pound is uh, $410,000. Now that's still fantastic. Uh, the uh, drawdown is 182, a little bit high, but they are our base results. And we're going to be doing quite a few things to these base results uh, before we move on and start testing the refinements. Then let's have a look at the Euro Yen. So I'll click on the Euro Yen and we'll look at the optimization results there. And there we have it. Uh, $1.4 million uh, was achieved, $1.2 million, and then the rest all pretty high up. So th as, as I've shown you in the previous section, that is all that you do. You create that template, you run the template, and there are the results. So what do, what do we do now? So I'm get, what I'm going to show you now is a deviation on the first video that I showed, uh, where I showed optimization techniques. I am going to use a special technique of downloading these results and sorting them into the criteria that I want. Now, one of the criteria that I want, I want a low drawdown, but a good income. So let's go and take these results, these million dollar results, and let's go and do just that. So what I'm going to do, I right click on, on this section here and I copy all like that. Okay, then I go and I open an Excel spreadsheet and I then paste all those results that have just Okay, so I've imported the data and I'm just going to put headings on there. That is the uh, test number. Uh, the, that is the income number. Uh, that is the drawdown number. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to create a formula that works out the the relationship between the drawdown and the income. So I, I'm going to insert two columns there and I'm just going to go and I'm going to make the income the first one. So I'm going to go plus income and I'm going to say how much is the income of the drawdown. And that gives a number that's a little bit too big for me. So I'm going to format that uh, quickly into uh, a more manageable number like that. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this down to the bottom of the sheet. It might be a few thousand readings here, but let's just do it. And that's done. Now I'll put, give that a heading and I'll call that the income income to drawdown ratio so that's that column that's the most important column that uh, i want now i'm going to sort these readings to show me the ones that had the biggest or the best income to drawdown ratio what is the maximum income generated on the smallest drawdown that's basically what i'm looking for so let's do that and i'll what i'll do is i highlight the database i go to sort I say my data has headings and then I sort on that column that I've just created there and I say I want to see the largest 
Okay, the results were sorted now and they are in the income to drawdown ratios and they are the biggest ratios and let's kind of have a look at the top ones and I'm what I'm going to do is I'm just looking at ones that have a fair amount of income, a fair amount of trades and a, a, a good ratio which is shown by that particular value. The third one there seems to be the one to choose at this stage. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to look for and what we'll I'll just um, highlight that. So we're going to look for test number 5940. So let's go and do that. 5940. So we go here, go here and I've sorted them in test order. So we, I have to go down right to 5940. So let's go whoop, whoop, close. Okay, 5940. There we are. We found it. And there it is. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put it into the um, test template. So to do that, I highlight it, right click, and then I set set input parameters then what will have happened is the input parameters will have gone right in here and and we all we need to do now is just run it and there we are now we have a set of results that have a very nice return on drawdown ratio so the drawdown's low, the return is nice and high. So the first step was to find a nice high return on drawdown ratio. The second one now is to bring everything in of this into reality. And what we're saying is that, remember, we are using in this test a $10,000 account. Now the drawdowns on this particular one is, are 32000 So... We can't trade those settings on a 32 uh, and, and generate a 32,000 drawdown on a 10,000 account. So we've got to bring that drawdown down. Now, the easiest to do, way to do that is, is mathematically. So you would say, all right, what do we want it to be? So we want it to be, let's say, $6,000. So, so what we would do is we go... 32,400 divided by 6,000, and that gives us a ratio of 5.4. Okay, so if the ratio is 5.4, what we then do is we have to reduce the lot sizing by a factor of 5.4. So we go in here, we have a look at what the existing lot sizing is. We go down, down, down. Where's the lot sizing? Lots for to trade entry 3.3.6 so now what we do is we divide 3.6 by 5.4 and let's see what figure what number we get there so let me do that 3.6 divide by 5.4 and we get a lot size of 0.6 seven and i'm just going to go six six so what i'm going to do here is i'm going to change that from six three point six to point six six that's the that's that's what we got so what i'm going to do now is i'm going to run that to see if firstly the drawdown comes down to about six thousand dollars and secondly the income should also come down so the income was one seven three four hundred one seven three four hundred divide by five point four so the income should come down to thirty two thousand roughly thirty two thousand and the drawdown should come down to roughly six thousand so what we're going to do is we're going to run it run it and see what results we get Let's finish the run. Let's open up and see what's happened there. 
And the, the drawdown is in fact a little lower than 6,000. It's 4,400, more acceptable. And the income is 24,000. Still very good. We were wanting 32,000. The income is now 24,000. That, so that ratio, so maybe we overdid the, the lot sizing calculation. It looks like it should go up by, let's just see. Let's see. Let's just, and I'm just going to guess at this. I'm just going to make that 0.8. And we'll run it again. Okay, let's have a look. There we are. All right, now the drawdown's 5,000. The income is, is six, uh, 30,000. And I think we are happy with that result. Uh, it's taken $10,000 and and created a profit of thirty thousand, so it's taken ten thousand to forty thousand dollars. Not a problem. That's a year, and it's done it with low drawdowns, low drawdowns in terms of the account size, and low drawdowns in terms of the income generated. So that is another way of generating base case settings. So let's go. Firstly, we've done all this work. We go here. We say we like these settings and we say save and we say uh, and I'll just call it Bell test Euro yippee and we'll, we, uh, um, sometimes it's good to put the date in some 3rd of October. Okay, so we save that now. Okay, let's have a look at where we are right now. Uh, year are, year is the plan for the video, and uh, we've done the objectives, we've done the test templates, we've created the test template, we created a base case optimization run, and during that run, we found one million dollar settings. Then we did. Uh, we uh, use that optimization hack by not using tick data in order to accelerate our testing. The uh, We got to a base case results. Then we changed the base case because we said we want high income, low drawdown settings. So we went and found the best best settings for that with a reasonable number of trades. And then we amended the base case. So now we're ready to go and test the options and move on from there. But what I'm going to do now is I'm going to stop this video. It's been a very long video in terms of testing. It's gone well over 20 hours. So I'm going to stop this particular video. I will make another video to test those specialized options and we'll continue with that process. But I think we've reached a point where you can now find million dollar uh, settings if you want. And, and look, that applies to this particular EA. There are many other EAs that, 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 that have the same potential. Then um, you've seen the pr process of uh, creating a base case, refining that base case, putting in some criteria that you want a nice r a return on your risk, and then sizing the results down to a level that will suit your account. Now that actually reminds me of something, and I'm actually going to go back to the testing to see if this works. But the other question that people ask is, okay, this is great for a $10,000 account. I haven't got $10,000 lying around. How will it do on a $1,000 account? So let's go and see if we can answer that question. Okay, here are the results that uh, produced the uh, previous ones. So I'm just going to run them again just to make sure that those are the results. And generally, they run very quickly. Okay, so there are the results, and they the, those really nice ones. Thirty thousand uh, produced, and on a t t on a drawdown of five thousand. Really. That's the kind of profile we're looking for for a $10,000 account. So let's see what happens if we now trade this on a $1,000 account. So what I'm going to do, I'll go into settings, 
we go into X and then we say we, we're no longer going to use a $10,000 we're going to use a thousand dollar account so that's now identified and then we're going to do the set so all we have to do is we go to lot sizing over here and we're using 0.8 for 10,000 so we can use theoretically theoretically we can use 0.08 08 for a thousand dollar account then just one more thing if we're going for a, a tenth of the lot sizing then the the target for the basket must be a tenth of what uh, the previous one so i'm changing that to 30 dollars instead of 300 dollars let's see if there's any other changes that need to be made no that seems to be it let's run it Okay, and there we are, scalability. So uh, we have a $3,000 return on a $1,000 account, and we have a 50% drawdown. So we, it shows you that those settings are now scalable down. So I think we've done pretty well in this video. We've really found some base cases, changed them, manipulated them into a $10,000 account. We've now manipulated it into a $1,000 account. And those settings, although they look really good, uh, still need some, uh, some, need some changing and we still need to convert it to tick data, which we'll do in the next video. As I mentioned earlier, please go and watch the videos suggested right in the beginning of this particular video. Uh, links to anything in this particular video will be in the description of the video as well as in the first commentary. Also, we'll be launching this fantastic EA, the Million Dollar Bell EA, in the next two to three weeks. So watch out for that launch if you're interested in, in trading this EA and then using this technique that I've just shown you now to find settings for other currencies, less volatile currencies like the euro yen is quite a volatile one and you've, I, I have done uh, settings for the euro pound. I'm going to be doing checking them out and refining them after this video but now you know how to do it and you can do it all yourself. So from me Alex Deploy, thanks for watching this video. The biggest compliment you can do for me is share this video with other traders and friends. Cheerio.